We are Abigail Lewis Photography Maternity and Newborn Photography Specialists based in South Wales. We are a team of two sisters that have been running the business for 10 years. We're in MPB Brighton today. This is where all the gear is kept and we are hoping to find a new lightweight setup. So my disability um, involves my joints and I dislocate my joints quite often. So I need things to be as lightweight as possible. We have had the same equipment forever, haven't we? The time has come now and now that we need something we more desperate. lightweight. We love MPB because they, everything they do is used which means you can trade in your equipment and offset the cost of new equipment to you. With it all being used, it's very sustainable and it's this circular economy. You're saving money and helping the environment at the same time. MPB basically is the world's largest platform for buying, selling and trading used photo and video kit. We recirculate about 350,000 items every year, putting kit back out into the hands of the community so it has a longer life and obviously creating a more sustainable future. MPB's grown massively, so it was established in Brighton about 10 years ago um, and it's grown internationally, so we've opened operations in Brooklyn and New York um, and then also more recently in Berlin um, to serve mainland Europe. By selling what you're no longer using, you're not only kind of freeing up funds to potentially trade up into something new, um, but you're also getting that kit back out there so that it's not sitting on a shelf being wasted and is actually out in the world, um, you know, creating more content and creating more imagery. <laughs> At the moment we're using a Canon 6D and a Canon 6D Mark II. Um, the 6D has got a kit lens on there and the Mark II has got a Sigma Art 35mm lens on there. So it's a pretty standard kind of, you know, pro yeah. setup. Uh, both phenomenal cameras in terms of image quality. Um, but, um, but yeah, the DSLRs. This isn't just a kind of standard kind of kit upgrade. There's specific kind of yeah. um, kind of health reasons why you're interested in potentially swapping to something else. Yeah, so I've got Ellis Danlos, which is a connective tissue disorder. Um, I've got too much collagen in my ligaments. My ligaments overstretch and then don't kind of go back. So it means there's not stability in my joints and they dislocate in and out of the socket when my muscles relax off. Um, which obviously carrying equipment it can um, put strain on my joints and it can precipitate it. Yeah. So it's it's become all about kind of trying to lighten my kit and just make things as easy as possible. So that gives us a lot of information. So yeah. obviously kind of what that tells me this isn't just necessarily about the image quality side of things and what the camera can do for you. It's also about kind of doing something that makes it as easy as possible yeah. for you to carry on doing your job. Obviously we all know about mirrorless technology. Everyone is either looking at doing it or has already done it. But I think what we know is that it's here to stay yeah. and it's not going to go anywhere. So mirrorless does offer a few advantages. When it first came out, everyone pretty much that was producing mirrorless cameras, they were all talking about the size and weight angle, okay? So the cameras could be smaller because there was no mirror box yeah. um, here. Obviously, they're still trying to make them look like they've got a tiny mirror box, but there's actually nothing there. Mm. This is just the electronic viewfinder. We're starting with Canon because that's what you already shoot on. This is a Canon EOS R. So this was Canon's very first full frame mirrorless camera. Um, and it came out, I think, in 2018. Okay. It was basically a mirrorless version of the Canon 5D Mark IV. Yeah. So the beauty about Canon is that even people that don't shoot Canon love the menu system because it's very easy to use. Yeah. It's, and to be honest with you, this one is probably slightly different to your 6D, but you'll understand it as soon yeah. as you see it. It's a 30 megapixel full frame sensor. So in terms of image quality, you're not gonna suffer. No. So the camera is something that I would have every confidence that you'll get used to very, very quickly. Yeah. It's a lot lighter. Yeah. Not incredibly lighter but it is definitely lighter yeah. but it's also smaller as well this is the 35 mil 1.8 okay hold that oh that's much like my 35 yeah, I, I figured it would have been <laughs> so the thing is with this is that you are losing about a third of a stop in right. light so with something like this it's a question of i guess balancing the benefits of the lighter weight yeah. um, against the slight loss in um, in the aperture. Yeah. Obviously, if you're using f1.4 a lot, you might want to keep that. But if you feel like actually you might want to try something that's a little bit slower, a tiny bit slower, um, then it could be a very beneficial setup. Mm. So let's put that on there. There you go. Oh my god, it's like no comparison. <laughs> <laughs> no comparison. So. 
so that's the positive, yeah. you know, uh, of which there are many with this system. But this will give you an idea of what I mean in terms of sometimes not the weight imbalance, but that the whole mirrorless being lighter is not always as simple as just saying yeah. it's lighter. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You, you had to almost... Yeah, so watch yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get you mean. But just that, that just gives you an idea as to kind of like how, I would say, the peak weight, yeah. you know, in terms of a standard not, setup. I would, I would say still not as heavy as the 60 with um, a big lens on it anyway. Exactly, you know, so, so that's, that just gives you an example as to kind of what that can do. Right, so what we have here is a Sony A7 R3. People say that it's not as nice for skin tones. I okay. find that the camera's giving you a basic image. You then you do your magic yeah. in post, you know, and eventually it might take you a while, but eventually you can work out your sweet spot. This yeah. just takes a bit more time, you know, if you're used to Canon. But the cameras themselves are very, very good and they always render a very accurate image okay. in terms of its colors and all of that. So this is the three. This is, the, this is not the latest version. It's okay. the one right before that. So R stands for resolution. This one has a 42 megapixel sensor. So the latest one has a 62 megapixel sensor. Okay. I don't necessarily think that you would need 62 no, megapixels. So as you can see, the body is quite small. Yeah. It's maybe not as, as, I think it's probably about the same weight as a Canon, I would say. Yeah. It's, it's so minimal. It's small. The yeah. grip is really comfy as well. Exactly. But the one thing about Sony is that they really, really do make an effort with trying to make those lenses as small as possible. Okay. And they are amazing at that. We'll start with these two 35s. So I'll let you hold those. Okay, so that obviously that one's lighter. <laughs> and that one probably is still a little bit lighter yeah, that's than, really your, like this. Than, your, than your Sigma, yeah. I imagine. The Sigma is a fairly weighty yes, lens, isn't it? Yeah. In that as well. Oh my God, yeah. It's much lighter. Yeah. It feels like, like a toy camera it does. almost. After using so DSLRs, cool. yeah. you're just like... <laughs> yeah. It feels like I'm going backwards or forwards. So the image quality for me is phenomenal. And actually, like one of my favorite cameras in the system is the A9. The A9 has a slightly different sensor to this one. It's, it's I don't know, it's like magic, that sensor. Um, but they edit beautifully. So when you get it and you're used to Canon, you are gonna go, oh, those skin tones are a little bit more muted, yeah. you know, but like, don't be afraid. I think what Sony's trying to do, they're, they're trying not to, impose themselves on you. I'm not saying Canon do, because Canon's, the Canon image is so well known and loved, yeah. it's almost like no one minds, but Sony's trying to remove all that and just give you accuracy. From that point of view, they're amazing. Controls are amazing. The ISO performance is phenomenal, yeah. like really, really phenomenal. I mean, I've shot this camera, the A9 at 12,000 ISO, shooting northern lights, and I don't see any, any noise. But the lenses are what really um, is they're quite amazing. They're, they're really phenomenal. I don't think there's a single weak lens in the system. Okay. I mean, that as a 35mm 1.4 with autofocus for me is like magic. I don't <laughs> understand how this lens can be as light as it is. It's extremely expensive. Yeah. Obviously, you can't have fast, sharp, yeah. and light and expect it to be cheap. It just doesn't factor into that yeah. equation. So it's a very pricey lens. So this is just a representation of what Sony can do. Sony have a ton of cameras in their range. The thing about Sony is that they give you more than what you expect, Okay. right? So they pack these cameras, they don't hold back stuff. They always give you more. Sony yeah. are really good at listening to their customers. So this is a Fujifilm X-T3 and accompanying lenses. Again, we've done the same thing, standard zoom and then uh, 35 mil, a fairly fast 35 mil. So this is the Fujifilm X-T3. It's amazing. Um, as you can see, it's very stylish as well. They do it in silver as well. So, and it kind of does look like old film cameras. Definitely. Main reason being the top dials. Yeah. I love top dials. If every, I, I wish every manufacturer gave me top dials because I don't like menu systems. Now, the one thing that is different about the Fujifilm to the other cameras is that it's not full frame. I'm gonna show you that the sensor. Yeah is a little bit smaller than what you're probably used to. If I were to put a 35 mil lens on here that says 35 on there, it's actually more like a 50. So it won't look like a 35 that you're used to, the field of view is different. Yeah. So this 23 mil is actually the equivalent of 35 yeah. because of the smaller sensor. Oh my God. It, even, like, it feels like an old film camera as well. It? <laughs> yeah, it does. But as you can so see, light. it's made entirely out of metal. It's very sturdy and it's a solid feeling camera. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like even the, even the lens feels like the old lenses. Like it all just looks. So they, they've like made a real effort to make them. Like that. Yeah, yeah. but everything is like bang up today. Like yeah. it's the lenses are incredible. Like you can pick any Fujifilm lens and they're all they will always be awesome. Super super sharp, beautiful colors. I mean straight out of the camera skin tones. I would say rivals or exceeds Canon, I would say. Like, they're that good. So this is the fastest uh, zoom that they do. Okay. Oh, that is really light. And again, super functional. It has all the same kind of functions as a mirrorless camera than the rest of them do. So if you wanted to shoot manual, for example, you can do, and it will help you actually get focus confirmation by the use of focus peaking. So with the crop sensor then, does that affect, um, like when I'm printing big acrylic pieces of wall art and things like that, does that affect that at all or? Generally speaking, the size of the sensor does not really affect the resolution. Resolution is actually completely separate, uh, a separate entity to sensor size. In terms of the blow up ability yeah. of, your, um, of your print, um, is entirely dependent on just the number. So you, okay. can, forget, you can forget about the, the sensor size. So there's the three setups that we've talked about. We've gone with the Canon, went onto the Sony, and obviously we talked about the Fujifilm last. So, so three setups. I've put the 35 mm lens on there, as I know that's the one that you tend to use the most with your 60 setup. So yeah. now obviously you're free to go and, and test them out and see, and see which you prefer. Amazing. Let's go test them out. Yeah. So first of all, we're going to try the Canon with a 35mm lens on there. Christy's got a fake bump on and we've got one of our Mia Steel dresses. We're also using MPB's lights and lovely studio that they've loaned us for um, two minutes. So yeah, let's see what it's like. One, two, three. Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> So next up is the Sony. This is the one with all the megapixels. This is great for blowing up images. After three, yeah, chin towards me a little bit. There you go, perfect. One, two, three. That was really cool. It was really satisfying, wasn't it? The burst rate is really fast in this. It's like almost like a video um, when you're looking back at it. Um, yeah, it's really satisfying listening to the clicks go. And usually we miss a few frames when we toss in the dress. This literally just caught them all. So that's perfect for what we want for a maternity session. Um, I don't think I'm going to really get on with this one. I haven't got a massive reason why. Um, I think it's probably because it's so different compared to all the others and everything is manual on the top. I'm sure there's ways of doing it um, on the back as well, but it just feels so different to the other cameras because it feels like a, an old school camera. There you go. One, two, three. It wasn't as good as the Sony or Canon. <laughs> yeah, you're missing quite a few in me. Oh. Three, two, one. Oh, much quicker. Oh my god. Great. After our test shoot, we went back to look at all the images to decide if there was enough difference in image quality to change our minds, and to make our final choice on which camera we wanted to take away and test out further. So the Fuji, like I love how it looks and how light it is. The Canon is so familiar and it produced beautiful images. And again, it's really light. Um, the Sony, the sharpness on that was pin perfect. Uh, I don't know which one we're gonna go for. Don't forget to check back for part two to find out which camera we chose and how we got on in the studio and on location testing it out. <laughs>